share you, so welcome back everyone for this afternoon session. And it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, uh, the third speaker uh, today, which is Tang Le from Georgia Tech, and I think he will give his talk, first talk about scale algebra of surfaces. Yep, thank you. Yep. Yep. First, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here. Um, <coughs> So my talk will be about the skin algebra of surfaces. <coughs> um, <coughs> so to every surface, so I will assume that this is the oriented surface, we will associate an algebra as a sigma called the skin algebra. <coughs> The definition is based on knot and links in the thickening of the surface. I will give uh, the definition later. Uh, this algebra <coughs> has, uh, so it has relation to many interesting objects. So it has relations to, first of all, classical objects, which is the character variety. <coughs> which plays an important role in uh, in many branches of math, like, uh, well, for especially in low dimensional topology. Uh, <coughs> so this is a classical object. And then there are other things like, uh, so it has relation to the Jones polynomial. And then TQFT based on the SU2 group. <coughs> uh, well, actually the definition, it comes from the uh, Kaufman definition of the, of the Jones polynomial. <coughs> <clears throat> well, certainly when it has relation to the Jones polynomial, you will think about the, uh, the, um, uh, the quantum group associated to SM2. But I will show you that it's actually intimately related to the so-called the SL2Q, which is the same as the OQ of SM2, <clears throat> which is the algebra of regular functions on the group SM2. But this is the quantum version. And actually, it's just, I wanted to show that it's just exactly this one here, when you focus on the so-called uh, uh, bygone. Uh, <coughs> uh, and it has relation to the quantum Tegmuller spaces. Via the so-called the quantum trace map so the quantum trace in the space was introduced by Chekhov Fock and then independently by Kashayev. <coughs> uh, and then um, there's the map from, from the skin algebra, embed the skin algebra into this quantum Chekhov space. Uh, that was the first conjecture by Chekhov Fock and then proved by, uh, by, um, by Bonahong and Wong. <coughs> and finally, it also has relation to the to the cluster algebras. Also, there's a quantum version, cluster algebras of surfaces. Uh, <coughs> uh, and so in the talks, I will mainly consider <coughs> Well, in the first talk, I will explain the basic of the skin algebra. In the second one, I will explain the relation to the quantum group, <coughs> the decomposition and the relation to the quantum group SN2Q. And then I will explain the relation with the Tegmuller space and quantum Tegmuller space. And then finally, I will describe the representation theory of the, of the, uh, of the skin algebra. Okay. Well, several people will talk about uh, skin algebra later this week, so I think that I will, <coughs> in the first part, I will explain uh, in detail the theory of the skin algebra first, okay? <coughs> well, maybe I uh, describe here a picture uh, that we will talk about. So, you know by car here, the, uh, the SM2 character variety, of the surface. <coughs> well, actually, there are some version of this that I will not 
fixify now. <coughs> and then T here is again certain version of the check meter space. Again, of that surface S sigma. <coughs> okay. Uh, then we know that then both are Poisson manifolds. So these are actually Poisson manifolds. Well, actually, if the surface is closed, then it's, it's the symplectic manifold. But if it's not closed, then in general, several versions of that would be a Poisson manifold. And the character, the same for the Tegmuller space. Okay. <coughs> and then there is, um, there is an, <coughs> there's a, a morphism or embedding or, or map from the Tegmuller space into the character variety. <coughs> and actually, this is a Poisson map. <coughs> this is a Poisson map. Uh, so dually, if you look at the space of, well, each of these is uh, an affine algebraic set, well, actually variety. So you have <coughs> uh, the map from the space of regular functions on the, char on the character variety map into, maybe I could write this down a little bit here. <coughs> so you have a map from the space of the regular function functions on the character variety into the space of regular function of the, of the Tegmuller space. <coughs> and this map is the possible map, just due to this one here, okay? <coughs> so now, remember that every possible manifold can be quantized, okay, by conservage. You have a, a deformation quantization of this here. So there's a quantization of this. This is CQ. This one here, <coughs> there's CQ of this Tegmuller space here, okay? <coughs> the quantization. <coughs> so the map here is usually known by trace because uh, in, in this classical picture here, uh, this map usually known by trace because it's just express the trace of certain operator in terms of the uh, 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 shear coordinate uh, of Thurston in this, in this case here. So this map here is the trace map here. So you have a quantization here, you have a quantization here. The quantization is more or less unique up to certain gauge transformation, okay? <coughs> so there was a question whether can you lift this to this one here. Conservative theory doesn't say anything about lifting of maps between, uh, between uh, uh, the quantization of a Poisson manifold. So there are certain cases when you can do that, but there's, in general, there's, there's, uh, there's no theorem about this one here, okay? <coughs> so it turns out that there exists. So actually, so, <coughs> so this quantization here is the character variety, and uh, not character, the skin algebra that I will define and, and the main object of, this, of these talks, of my talks here, okay? The quantization of the character variety will be the skin algebra. The quantization of this here is the jacob fock algebra, uh, quantum tegmuller space, or, and also so this is a Chekhov fork and also Kashaev. Well, Kashaev, well, actually the version that I'm talking about is uh, a multiplicative version of the Chekhov fork algebra, which was actually defined by Bonnehong and Wong, uh, Bonnehong and, and his students. <coughs> and then Chekhov fork conjecture, Chekhov fork conjecture that there exists a leaf of this. So this is the quantum trace map, which should be an algebra homomorphism from this algebra to the te quantum tegmuller space here, okay? And this was proved by, this was proved by Bonnehong and Wong. <coughs> well, in the proof, so what they do, is they look at the classical formula here. And you have a sum of many, I mean, if you take a curve here, the trace will be expressed by a Lorentz polynomial, a sum of many terms, okay? And then try to quantize by replacing one by Q to something. So put, putting Q here and there, and then, and then they show that actually the map works. So it means that there's, uh, to show that it's an algebra map is difficult, okay? And they, 
<coughs> they check this and they, <coughs> they, they use many identities which they call miraculous identities there, okay? And one, <coughs> one uh, and, and in these lectures, I want to explain how this map can be, uh, <coughs> can, how can we un understand this in the framework of the, of the decomposition that I will mention here, uh, maybe probably next le lecture, okay? <coughs> okay, so that is, uh, uh, <coughs> so now let me go to the, uh, the theory, the details of the, first I will explain what is a skin algebra. I will give uh, some uh, a lot of examples and also example of the quantum trace map for the for the puncture total. Yes. yes? No, no, yeah, right, yeah, just deformation quantization so that the uh, so that the semi-classical would be equal to the Poisson structure of this one here. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so let me now recall the uh, coffin bracket. So L here is a link in S3. So by definition, this is just a union of, so just this draw union of several S1 embedded into S3. Okay, you have a finite number of circles embedded in S3, we call it a link. <coughs> and in this talk here, I will assume that the links are unoriented. <coughs> okay, and then a frame link a frame link is just a link together with a non tangent vector field. So along the, <coughs> along the link, you will have some vector field which is not tangent everywhere. So in particular, it's not zero at any point, okay? <coughs> and certainly you consider isotopy, as usual, you consider is isotopy classes. Well, the isotopy here is just also in the class of uh, in the class of frame link, as usual. Okay, so <coughs> <coughs> now, as usual, link can be presented. So you you have here the standard R three. So in R three, you have standard R two. So link can be presented by link diagram, by link diagrams in R2 as usual. So for example, well usually when we draw a link, we draw a, a link diagram, right? I mean this is the picture of a, a link diagram on R2 here, <coughs> where you have only simple intersection with a double point and then at every double point you have a, over and under crossing information. And from there, you can recover the link types or the, uh, the isotopic class of the link. <coughs> so link can be presented by link diagram, okay? But every, well actually every link diagram gives you a frame link. Gives you right away a frame link by, <coughs> we, by where the framing is just vertical everywhere. Okay, so it mentioned that just the, the uh, vector field here is just perpendicular to the board and just pointing at us. Okay, so you will have uh, the framing right away from every uh, link diagram, okay? It's not difficult to show that every link, every frame link can be presented by such a diagram. We call this the blackboard presentation of such a frame link, okay? <coughs> Say it again. Yeah, every frame link can be presented by a link diagram together with the uh, vertical framing. It's very easy to prove, okay? <coughs> uh, <coughs> okay, and then you can say suddenly when to when two link diagrams present the same 
frame length, okay? So two link diagram represent the same frame length, the same frame length, if and only if, if and only if they are related by sequence of rider master moves. <coughs> so which are the following? So the first one will be this one here is the same, it should be the same as this, this one. <coughs> the second is uh, the usual one that you, and then the third one Sorry, this should be the same as this one. So this is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. Okay, so it means that, uh, so this is right the master theorem for frame links in R3, two link diagrams represent the same frame link if and only if they are related by a finite sequence of moves like that, okay? Well, in addition to the obvious uh, uh, isotopy of the plane. <coughs> okay, so you can define invariant of frame lengths by defining invariant by defining invariant of link diagram, which which is invariant under these moves here. Okay, <coughs> so now to a link diagram. So this is a link diagram. You associate the bracket polynomial, the common bracket polynomial, that will be in the ring that I know by R, and by definition this is the ring Z of Q plus minus one half here. I add square root of Q for convenience later, although for the first part we don't need square root of Q. <coughs> okay, so where we define D by the following rule, so whenever you have a crossing, the bracket should be equal to Q, this one. I will drop the bracket now. First. And then if you have a <coughs> trivial component, uh, so this is L, this joint union with a trivial component that could be just the same as the bracket of L, and then minus Q square, minus Q minus two. Okay, so there are two rule here, one, two. Okay, so if you have a if you have a diagram, you convert it into uh, so. Well, let me give an example here. <coughs> so this is the half link, and it has two crossing. So this is equal to first. I resolve this crossing here. I get Q of this one plus Q inverse of this one. Okay, so that is the first, if I resolve this crossing here, now I get this picture, and then I can continue with this one here. So it will be Q, and then now we do this one and this one here. So that would be Q square, this one, plus this Q inverse here. So it will be just this one here, plus, uh, plus this one, plus Q minus two of this one here. Okay, so if you, and now each, uh, each component now doesn't have any crossing, and so it will be, uh, the value of each will be, will be just, just this number here. So if I denote this by, <coughs> by delta here, then this will be equal to Q square delta plus two delta plus Q minus two, and then delta square. So this is also delta square. Okay, and then you replace delta by this one here, you get a Laurent polynomial in Q. Okay, so that is the, the bracket polynomial of a diagram, okay? <coughs> now what Kaufman show is that this one here is, uh, an, is invariant, is actually an invariant of frame length. 
a frame length in R3. Okay, so that is Anshi, and Anshi, this is equal to the frame Jones for your new. Uh, you can easily renormalize this so that it become an invariant of, of unframed length in R3, and then in that case, it's equal to the Jones polynomial. Okay. Well, actually, this is probably the, one of the easiest way to define the Jones polynomial. Okay. <coughs> so that is the Kaufman bracket that gives the uh, Kaufman polynomial of links in R3, of links in R3. Okay, well, I assume that everybody knows about the uh, Kaufman bracket of links in R3. <coughs> okay, <coughs> and now, well, when Jones defined his polynomial, uh, there was question about how to extend the definition of the Jones to, of the Jones polynomial to links in all the three manifolds. So, um, Prostitsky and Turaev came up with the following, uh, the so-called skin model. So this is a, uh, Prostitsky and independently Turaev, <coughs> they define the skin model of three manifolds. So M here is uh, an oriented three manifolds. <coughs> so the definition is very simple. You take, so this is denoted by S of M. You take R span of frame links in M. So as usual, when I say the framings, I always mean that it's isotopic class of link, okay? We don't distinguish links with uh, isotopy uh, links. And you divide by the relation one and two, which are used, so these are the, so, so these relations here, okay? <coughs> so which means that if you have two, for example, the, uh, the first relation says what? If you have, uh, if you have a, if you have a three links which are identical everywhere, except for a small one in which this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one here, then you impose this condition on those three. Okay, so when you factor, you have to factor out by the smallest models which contain these here. And similarly, if you have so, so now this one here should be a three year link, it means that this one should bounce a disk in the three manifold. Okay, then you can remove that. Well, there's one small point here that you, <coughs> so I will assume that the empty set here, empty set is by definition a frame link. So this is the convention. And I include that in the definition here, okay? So the empty set is considered as a frame link with zero component, which is isotopic only to itself. <coughs> and then you include that in this one here. So this one, S of M, it's just you look at all the frame links, you divide by the relation generate, uh, the, the Kaufman relations there, okay? So for example, if M is R3, okay? Kaufman reasons, just say that then, so Kaufman, just say that then the skin of R3 just isomorphic to the ground ring uh, to the ring of Laurent polynomial here, to this R here, okay, where <coughs> to every link you just associate X polynomial. That is the isomorphism between uh, the skin model of R3 and the ground ring. And that is the, the content of Kaufman uh, uh, theorem, okay? So in general, for, for any L, this SM here is just, in a sense, just a set of all Kaufman polynomials for frame links in M, okay? So more, 
precisely if you have any linear functional from this to any linear functional. So this is just our linear function. Okay. Then f of a link L here will be a Kaufman polynomial. <coughs> it means that you have a polynomial satisfying these two relations, uh, relation number one and number two here for links in the manifold L. Okay? So in a sense, the size of this skin model will tell you just or the rank of this tell you how many, how many different uh, covering brackets of covering polynomial for frame links in M there are, okay? So that is uh, <coughs> a very primitive uh, generalization of the Kaufman polynomial for links in, in uh, an arbitrary tree manifold, okay? <coughs> uh, so, Any questions so far? I mean, everything I said here just classical. Now, <coughs> so this is just a model, just an R model. Okay, and now we want to. <coughs> there are some cases when this model becomes algebra, and I will look at the cases. So this is algebra structure. So there are two cases. The first one is if Q is equal to plus or minus one, okay? And for simplicity, I will assume that in that case, R is just C instead of this one here. So you should take the algebra, so this R here, just the ground ring here, is now just the field of complex numbers, okay? And Q is just either one or minus one. <coughs> in this case, the skin relation, if you look at it, Let's just say that, so for example, if Q is equal to minus one, if Q is equal to minus one, that's just minus of this one and then minus this one here. Okay, so if Q is equal to minus one. <coughs> now, if I look at the, if I switch the order here, or the, uh, from overcrossing to undercrossing, that's equal to minus of this one and then minus of this one, okay? But now you see that this one and this one are the same, okay? This one and this one are the same. So, it means that this one and this one are the same. So, it means that this is the same. <coughs> Which means that overcrossing and undercrossing are the same, okay? That's, so, it means that this one here would be equal to this one now. <coughs> so, it means that if I have a link, you, in this case here, you can you can move any link, you can, you can move one link across another easily, okay? And so we can define, now we can define the product if you have a link and another one. If you have two links, one and another one. I define the product as just, just take the destroyed union of L and L prime, okay? So, and then this relation tells us that it doesn't depend on isotopic classes of L and L prime, okay? So the product now is well defined, the product now is well defined, okay? In this case here, and again for my, for plus one or, my, or minus one, they are well defined. This part, the disjoint union will be well defined here. Okay, if Q is not one, then in general it's not well defined. If you just take the disjoint union because you cannot move one uh, uh, across the other. <coughs> and so this S minus one of M here is a C algebra. Is a C algebra. Okay, it's an algebra over C. Now, if M, for example, is compact, then it's not difficult to show that this one here is a finitely generated C algebra. Well, using the compactness, you can prove this, okay? <coughs> and what can be a finitely generated C algebra? Well, in general, it should be the ring of regular functions of certain Algebraic set, okay, or algebraic variety. <coughs> um, I think this is wet.
Well, actually, if you look at the ring of regular functions of, of an affine variety, you get a finitely generated C algebra. But that algebra does not have uh, any nimpotent, okay? <coughs> so if I take S minus one of M, which is, uh, uh, sorry, minus one here, when Q is equal to minus one, <coughs> And then I divide by the new radical of this, it means that the set of elements whose some power is equal to zero, <coughs> then it turns out that it's canonically isomorphic to the ring of regular functions on the character, on SM2 character varieties of the manifold. So this chi here is the SM2 character variety. So by definition, let me recall this, this is to take the set of all homomorphism from pi one of M <coughs> into SM2C. And you mod out by the uh, conjugation. So you take the SM2 X on this, but actually we, you, here you have to use the GIT quotient, means that you identify a point which is, you identify the orbit, so, so recall that this is just the orbit this here, but you have to identify an orbit with its closure in the Zariski topology. <coughs> okay, so this is the character variety <coughs> of, the, of the manifold, and, and this is, it is canonical isomorphic, and this is the reason of a reason of Bullock, of uh, Bullock and Prestigeki. and Shiko. Say it again. But this is the new radical. So this is the. So this is the set of our x so that x to the k is equal to zero for some k. Okay. Of uh, of the ring. Okay. That is isomorphic to canonically isomorphic to this one here. Okay, well actually maybe I give the, def, uh, the, the, the map here, how to define this map here. So if L is a link, L is an element, so L is a link, L is a link in, <coughs> in M, okay, you have to define what is the function, okay, what is the function, so it means that L, and then you apply to a character. So this is, you apply the character of certain representation row. Okay, you have to get a number, right? So what number can we produce from a link and a representation, an SM2 representation? It's very simple, you take rho of L, right? You take rho of this element L, then you take a trace of that. So this is you take rho of L, <coughs> and then you trace of that. When you take the trace, you take care of the ambiguity with the, with the initial point, okay, because uh, if you choose another initial point or base point, then the two elements are just conjugated and trace is invariant under conjugation. And then all you need to do to make the things uh, well really well if you put a minus sign there. And that could be the, this canonical map from this one to this one here. <coughs> so, so character here, what is a character? Character is just character of certain representation, right? As so this is, uh, <coughs> you have rho from pi one of m to SL2, C, right? So that rho applied to this L, considered as an element in, yeah. L is an element in scheme module, but now we consider it as an element in the fundamental group, okay? It has several loops and you take, you choose arbitrary base point and then take the product and then take the, the, the trace of that. <coughs> okay, so that is, uh, uh, the reasons that, I mean, it relates this skin model to the character variety, which is plays an important role in geometric geometry, okay? <coughs> so that is the first instance. Well, you might wonder what about the plus one here, okay? So what I told you here is when Q is going to minus one, when Q is one, it's also commutative. You can see that it's also commutative. But, so there's a result of, I think it's Barrett. It's 
that for every spin structure, spin of M3, there exists an isomorphism. Well, so this is an algebra isomorphism from S plus one of M to S minus one of M. Okay, so these two are isomorphic, and but the isomorphism is not canonical, it depends on a spin structure. So to every spin structure, you can define an isomorphism between the two, okay? And so it means that uh, this entropy is also isomorphic to the character variety, but not canonically. I mean, the S plus one. The S minus one, in a sense, more natural in this aspect. <coughs> okay, so that is the first case when you will have uh, an, uh, an algebra structure. <coughs> so, you, so, so, so you see that this is related to the, to the character variety, but it's intimately related to the Jones polynomial. So this is the reason why the skin algebra serves as a bridge between, between classical topology and quantum topology. And actually using the skin algebra of not complement I could prove the so-called, the AJ conjecture which relates the A polynomial and the Jones polynomial for, for certain class of, of knots. Okay, using this uh, connection between the uh, character, character variety and, and, the, and the Jones polynomial. Sorry. Yep. Um, don't you apply rho to L there? Well, yeah, but again, <laughs> when you reverse the orientation, uh, <coughs> so the thing is that in, in SL2, trace of alpha is equal to trace of alpha inverse in SL2C. So that, that's the reason why you don't need orientation. That's the reason why you don't need orientation. Yeah. That's a good question, yeah. And if you choose another base point, then the difference just conjugation is again is, is uh, invariant under uh, uh, the trait, the trace here. Okay. <coughs> well, maybe, okay. <coughs> okay, so that is the first, uh, the first case where you have a, an algebra structure, okay? Now for the second case, and this is uh, the case that we will consider 2L I mean, so in this case here, uh, we, we look at the case when sigma here is an oriented surface. <coughs> okay, and n here would be sigma cross minus one comma one. So you take the open interval from minus one to one. So now you, so, so this is just a thickening of a tree of a surface. You get a three manifold. Okay, so I define S of sigma to be just S of sigma cross minus one comma one. Now this is oriented, this is also oriented, so the product will be an oriented three manifold, okay? <coughs> now in this case here, I define the product, where's the product? If I have L1 and then L2, what I do is just I put L1 atop L2, okay? So that will be the, that will be the product. So what does this mean? <coughs> this means first I isotope L1 so that it could be in the upper half. So this one here would be in, in sigma cross zero one. And this one here would be in sigma cross minus one comma zero. Okay, you first isotope L1 so that it become in the upper half of this thickening of the surface. And you isotope L2 so that it's in, in the, okay. <coughs> in terms of diagram, it means that I just draw L1 superimpose L1 above L2. Okay, if you have a diagram L1 on the surface, L2 on the surface, and then the problem is just, I just, every line, every component of L1 should be just above the component of L2, and that's it. Okay, so that is the product. <coughs> okay, so again, it's, uh, I mean, it's very easy to show that this is well-defined product and this makes this algebra into, uh, this model into a, a, an algebra, to, into an algebra. Okay, it's, in general, it's known commutative in general. 
in general, non-commutative in general, okay? <coughs> okay, now before giving the um, uh, examples of this, let us look at what can be <coughs> a basis of this, of this skin entropy, just as a model over R, okay? So as model over R, is an R model, as R model, this S sigma is freely spanned by, by the following. <coughs> well, first of all, you, if you look at diagram on the surface, if it has a crossing, if it has a crossing, then you can resolve that crossing using this relation here. Right? If you have a crossing, you resolve this, you get rid of the crossing. Okay? If it has a driven component, you can also remove it, this here. Okay? So what remains just just link diagram with no crossing and no driven component on the surface. Okay? So basically this consists of link diagrams on sigma, no crossing, and then no trivial component. Okay, so that is the, that group form a, <coughs> and again, every, I mean, when, when I see this, we, I always mean isotopic classes of link diagrams on the surface, okay? No crossing, and then no trivial component. If you are familiar with the theory of uh, surface, usually this is called, I think this is called a multi-curve. A multi, we also, multi-curve, or simple multi-curve on, on, the, on the surface. <coughs> so, now you can, well actually, so maybe let us know this set by, well, in many textbooks it's known by S, but maybe this is, so you know this by B. It's the basis. So this set here is a B. This set here is B. <coughs> now this set B here doesn't depend on, it's the same for all the value of Q. It doesn't depend on Q. It's just, okay, it's the same for all the value of Q. Only the product, only when you take the product, then Q will appear there. But if you just look at just as a model over this one, or, or if, you, if you take C, uh, the, the ground ring is C, and then Q is just a complex number, then this doesn't depend on, on, the, on that value, complex value, okay? <coughs> okay, so now let's look at example of this, of the skin algebra here. And you will see that, uh, you will see many familiar uh, algebras here. <coughs> So these are the examples. <coughs> so the first is when sigma here is just a disk. Okay? <coughs> well actually we already consider this case here. Then a thickening of this is just a three ball. And the three ball is the same as just R3. And so this is just, the ring is just R, okay? So in this case here, S of sigma is just canonically isomorphic to R, okay? Well, actually, you look at the link diagram on this one here, there will be no link, right? There will be, I mean, this basis here just, just consists of one element, which is the empty set. And so this is just, this gives you this isomorphism here, okay? So again, L, we go to just the bracket of L. That is uh, the one that we had before, and that's the ring R here. <coughs> the second case is when sigma here is uh, <coughs> the so-called sigma zero two. Uh, means that this is just an annulus. When you take this sphere and you remove two points, and you get the annulus here, okay? So this is the annulus. <coughs> you have the annulus here. Now if you look at the basis, what can be a link diagram on this surface here, with no crossing and no driven component, okay? What are they? They're just a bunch of curves. Uh, each is just a core of this, right? So, an, an element of this, <coughs> an element of this one, will be just <coughs> uh, 
a typical element of the other basis would be just that. You have just several curves around this one here. That could be a basis, okay? That's all, that's the basis, okay? <laughs> but this element here is actually equal to this element. So this one curve here, and I raise to power three, right? I mean, if you take the power of three, and then you get this one here, okay? So if I know this by z, then this is just z cubed here. This is just z cubed, okay? So you see that this one here, in this case here, s of sigma is canonically isomorphic to just r on one variable in z, just the ring of polynomial on z, where z is the core of, the, of this one here. Okay, so z is just the core of the annulus. Okay, so in this case here, the algebra is also very simple. It's just the ring of polyno uh, polynomial ring. And in particular, it's commutative. In particular, it's commutative, okay? <coughs> now the third is we look at, <coughs> so sigma is sigma 0, 3. So in this case here, you have uh, uh, a disk with two punches like that here. <coughs> so this is the disk where you drill out two holes, okay? <coughs> now again, in this case, what can be a basis now? So you have a linear diagram, no crossing, no trivial component, okay? So you see that I could have things like this here, things like this here, and then things like this here. You have just a bunch of curves, each is just parallel to each of these, it's just Okay, <coughs> so if this, is the, if this is x, this is y, and this is z, then you can easily sh show that as the sigma here is actually isomorphic to r of three variable x, y, and z. Okay, you have just polynomial on three variables, x, y, and z, and freely generated by these three here. Okay, so that is uh, the skin algebra of this one here. <coughs> So these are very simple, but now look at more interesting cases <coughs> where you will see that uh, in general, the, uh, the skin algebra uh, is not commutative. So let me first recall that the quantum torus T is uh, generated by two elements, x plus minus one, y plus minus one, and then y is equal to q, sorry, y x is equal to q square x y. Okay, so, so this is called a quantum torus. Well, this is a quantum torus generated just by two elements. Later, we will encounter quantum torus generated by many, um, many elements. <coughs> so now, suppose sigma is, uh, uh, is the torus. Okay, so this is sigma one zero. Genus one, there's no puncture. Okay, so it's the quantum, this is the torus. Now, what can be the skin algebra of sigma? <coughs> that in this case here, it turns out that, so this is not quite trivial. Uh, so this is a reason, I think, of uh, uh, Foreman and Jenker. And Sunnaf, I think, I don't remember now. Let's uh, uh, say that there's an isomorphism again, an isomorphism. So actually then in many of this skin integral into the quantum torus. So it's, it's just T sigma, where sigma here is the involution sigma of x should be equal to x inverse, and then sigma of y should be equal to y inverse. Okay, so it means that you look at this involution of this quantum torus, and you look at the set of fixed points of that invol involution, okay? <coughs> so for example, x plus x inverse is certainly invariant, right? And then y plus y inverse is also invariant, okay? And actually, this isomorphism here, this map to the meridian, and, and this is the longitude. So meridian is just a curve. It's an element of this one. Longitude is also another curve, it's also an element of this one. And, and these two will map to x plus x inverse, y plus y inverse here, okay? 
So this is uh, now already more interesting. You see some connection between this algebra and, and some familiar algebra, which is the quantum torus in this case here. Okay? Yes? So, so R only contain Q involved. The ground ring R, the ground ring R is the lower polynomial in Q and Q inverse. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Sorry. Is no. No. Say, say, say it again. What? Is it, is it here? Sigma. Sigma. How does it behave over Q? Uh, sigma. Uh, yeah. Sigma of Q is Q. You don't inverse Q. Sigma of Q is Q. Okay. Yeah, so sigma here is, uh, is, an R, uh, is an R isomorphism. It's an R isomorphism, okay? <coughs> okay. Oh. <coughs> now let's look at the pinch of torus. It's actually a lot more interesting. So this is the puncture torus. <coughs> so you have a, and actually you just remove a small list, you remove a point of small list, it, it doesn't matter, okay? <coughs> so this one here, I can, you can do the following. You, <coughs> you identify, so this is a, an ideal this is an ideal square, and, you, and then you identify this one with this one, this one with this one, right? That will be uh, the puncture torus. This is an ideal square. Ideal means that you have to remove on the vertices here, okay? <coughs> then here you have here, so this is n phi is uh, meridian, and then you have here beta here is the longitude, okay? And then you can have a, a gamma. So I draw it in another picture here. So this gamma, this is the curve of, 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 of uh, absorbed one. So this gamma, okay? So this gamma, it's curve of absorbed one. Okay, so this is uh, zero, one, one, zero, and then absorbed one here, one, one here, okay? Then skin of this one is, so this is the result of, okay, so this bullock, and Pritishki, okay. So R is by alpha, beta, gamma, and you divide by the relation here. So let me just alpha comma beta sub Q should be equal to Q squared minus Q minus two, and then gamma, and then plus on the cyclic. So alpha, beta, gamma. Uh, so these are cyclic. So it means that you replace uh, alpha beta by beta gamma and then so on, okay? Where alpha comma beta sub Q should be, is Q alpha beta minus Q inverse beta alpha. <coughs> okay? So this is the skin algebra. This is the presentation skin algebra of this one here. Now what is this algebra? <coughs> If this was, if, if this is one, and this is also one, then you get the SO3, right? You get SO3, you, you have, you see, the commutator of these two, of the of two is equal to the third one, that is SO3. So in a sense, this is a, a quantization of SO3, in some sense, okay? <coughs> well, yeah, but you can renormalize so this non-zero, okay? If this is one, and this is also one, then you get, you get, uh, you get SO3. Okay, <coughs> but maybe it's a bit, uh, maybe it's more interesting if we, if we, um, <coughs> so this is uh, recently when I, uh, when I study uh, positivity of this one here, I noticed the following. So now I add, you add Q squared minus Q minus two, inverse two R. So you assume that this is invertible in the ground ring, okay, then as sigma is, also equal to, this is only two generators, so I call it x and y, and divide by the following relation. <coughs> the relation is the following. Uh, so if you know quantum groups, it's, it's very, so this is, this could be x squared y minus two quantum, 
x y x plus y x square should be equal to q square minus q minus two, and then y. Okay, and similarly, y square x minus quantum two of y x y plus <coughs> uh, x y square is equal to q square minus q minus two x. Now, if you <coughs> <coughs> if this were zero, if it was zero, then this is the so-called the quantum cell relation for SL3, the quantum cell relation for SL3, okay? So for example, this is, it has degree three, this has only degree one, so if I take the associated graded entropy, and then, then, then this would become zero in the, in the, the associated graded entropy, and then you will get the boring part of SL3, of UQSN3 in this case here, okay? And I think this will have some, uh, well, there's a conjecture to say that all the skin into the, uh, has a basis which, which, which is positive. And so this should, should, should somehow relate to the positivity of, of UQS entry. <coughs> okay, but the most interesting thing, well now we can, <coughs> we can embed, we can embed this into a quantum torus. an embedding as a sigma into a quantum torus. Well, here I assume that sigma has, maybe I just, at least, so, one puncture. But I will, uh, but you can forget this. Now just concentrate on just the puncture torus, okay? <coughs> And actually, many of you probably know the quantum group, right? I mean, UQ of a Lie algebra for any simple Lie algebra can also be embedded into a quantum group, uh, into a quantum torus. This is not a very well-known fact, but it's true, okay? For UQSM2, it was first proved by Fadiev, and then for general Lie algebra, it's just a couple of years ago uh, by, Shapiro or some other, uh, yeah. so you can actually embed the quantum group into quantum torus, into quantum torus, okay? <coughs> uh, and now let me explain uh, one such embedding. Well, for the for the for for the puncture torus here. Oh, I have only one minute. So <coughs> the, the 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 quantum torus that I'm talking about in this case here now is generated by three. Elements, so it's going to be here a plus minus one, b plus minus one, c plus minus one. Okay, and then <coughs> ba should be equal to q square ab, and similarly bc, well, bc is q square ba, bc, sorry, ba, and then cb. <coughs> Maybe I just write here again and then a plot on the cyclic A to B, B to C, C to A. Okay, so this is just AB and then you have uh, BC and then CA, each will have this relation like that. Okay? <coughs> and then, <coughs> and then the map, the embedding. So this is a quantum torus generated by three generators here. It's just like Lorentz polynomial in, non commutative Lorentz polynomial in three generator. <coughs> And there's an embedding S of the S of sigma embedding in this T here. Okay, given by, so I write here, uh, so this alpha, this alpha here, <coughs> map two. So BC plus B inverse, C inverse, plus, uh, plus B inverse C. Okay, 
And for, again, for here you see that you have this cyclic permutation. You do exactly the same cyclic permutation in this one here. You get the image of beta and gamma, okay? So what does this mean here? B times C here, where if x, y is equal to some constant C, so Q to some constant C, x comma y, y x, then this product x, y, by definition is Q minus C over two X times Y. So that's the, the so-called normalization of non-commutative product. Okay. So this one, this, is, this has the, the virtue of that X, Y is equal to Y, X here. So these two variables, although they do not commute, they Q commute, okay, in that case you can use this notation, it's very, uh, very convenient. In that case, x, y is the same as y, x, okay? And, and this is, uh, this is uh, this, with this normalization, I have this embedding here. <coughs> well, this embedding is very good in the sense that, <coughs> first of all, it's the many of the same dimension. I mean, the dimension of, of this one here is three, the dimension of this quantum torus is also three, it has three generator, okay? So, uh, <coughs> and so let's just say that the, this algebra is almost the same as the, as the quantum torus because, it's because of this finite dimension, it's just finite uh, extension. Uh, <coughs> and the quantum torus is much simpler than, than the things because, uh, well, we know everything, almost everything about the quantum torus. It's all its representation and, and everything. Okay. So actually this is just a special case of the quantum trace map. And I hope that I will, um, and, and I, I hope I will explain why you have this here. I mean, what, where, where this going is. It actually comes from uh, an ideal derivation of the, of the puncture torus, okay? I, I will explain the more general uh, quantum torus associated to, to any puncture torus. And actually this is a, a version of the Chekhov fock algebra of the quantum technical space here. Okay. Uh, I ran out of time, so thank you for listening. <laughs> Uh, I said again. In this case, the scan, the scan uh, algebra is it uh, also a fixed point? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, so no. Um, uh, well, I don't know any. Certainly not an involution, but I don't know if you have a finite group acting on this, so that so that this could be a, uh, the set of fixed points. So, so I don't. I don't think so. But I don't. Think so. Yes. Well, actually, so in a sense, uh, you can embed the puncture torus into into the, uh, the 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 closed torus, and then the map will be a surjective map. Okay, so there's so this means that the skin entry of the torus here is a quotient of the skin algebra of the puncture torus. It's a quotient, but not an embed. Yeah, so, I mean, this one here is two-dimensional. The, 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 for the complete torus here, this one is two-dimensional. The other one is three-dimensional. The puncture torus is three-dimensional, okay? So when you dream out a point, actually you make the things more complicated. You add dimensions to them. So let me ask one further question. Yep. So in your embedding here, yep. um, what is the relation between the ring and the dimension of the torus? I uh, said again, the, the, you mean the, it's this? rank as a dimension. Oh, for, for this one here? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, for, for, for UQSN2, you can, so UQSN2 is more or less dimension three, right? And you can, you can choose uh, also dimension three here. But I'm not, I don't think that's true for general Lie algebra, okay? In Fatih's work, he produced an embedding of S, UQSL2 to a four-dimensional torus, but actually you can reduce to three dimension, and that is certainly the, the, the optimal one. For general Lie algebra, the work of, uh, this recent work of Shapiro and all the people, they just show an embedding, but it's, uh, I mean, the rank is much, much higher than the rank of, of, U, of G here. Yeah. Okay, if there are no further questions, I thank you. Thank you. Yeah.